Hello Reapers, my name is Seth and we are back again to talk about some Pixark because if you didn't already notice on the official Snail Games USA YouTube channel, which is the YouTube channel that they publish anything in regards to Pixark, they actually ended up releasing an explorer's guide that talks about taming and the like. So it's very interesting, it's kind of cool. The video itself is only roughly two minutes. I will put a link in the description to the original video because today we're gonna be over analyzing it and taking a look at all of the neat little things that we come across. So for starters, we have the character dropping in by parachute and then we get to see very briefly for a split second right at the beginning that you can use the scanner at the dinosaurs while in empty hands. So I, I don't know what that means necessarily. Uh, maybe a scanner is going to end up being uh, something part of the skill tree, part of your character's level, or quite simply put, it's just holding right click is going to operate as a scanner, very similar to a spyglass would work in Arc, right? So the interesting thing is that you can actually see right here that we get to scan blocks and it actually shows grasp cube suggested a wooden pickaxe of course any other type of pickaxe is going to end up being better for it but it's cool that it actually tells you uh, a brief description of the block type itself i think that that's going to end up helping with a lot of the general confusion of the game because a lot of the blocks and stuff like that of course are going to end up being something unique to the game so if we end up coming across some super like ore or something at least it should end up telling us what tool we're going to actually need in order to mine it right but then more importantly than that, we actually get to see Bronto, level 28, with a very, very cute little picture right here that I absolutely love. It does also mention that it's a passive tame, because the tames are going to be built, uh, broken into two different methods. There's going to be passive tames, which we'll talk about in a little bit, and then there's just going to be knockout active tames, or whatever you would call that, right? But I like the fact that it actually shows the different statistics in a nice little triangle bar. Shows how simple the game is going to end up actually operating in regards to leveling the creatures, where you can see Bottom left is going to be movement, so we obviously see that this Bronto is not a very fast character, but he does have a lot of strength and he does have a lot of health. Female, normal creature, wild state, grasslands outer ring is going to be the biome that it uh, hangs out in, and novice prairie, I guess. Uh, it would be interesting uh, if they ended up having a little bit more of a description of it, because otherwise that's kind of vague. Then we get to kind of just see the character hanging out in a house and just kind of exploring the wilds and stuff like that, kind of picking up different resources a little bit of arrow play, which is obviously going to be what's involved for, uh, you know, going out into the world and grabbing stuff, and then some Argents as well as the pyro, uh, pyro birds and stuff, or pterodons or whatever they're called. I always forget the name of all these creatures. Passive taming and knockout taming. That's what they split it into, right? So you're going to see with this dodo creature right here, this is going to end up being a passive tame. Now the way that passive tames are going to work is very similar to how they ended up working in Ark. You're going to have to take your food item and put it on the last slot of your inventory. So you're going to put it all the way down into your zero slot. Once you end up putting food into the zero slot, you just walk up to whatever the uh, creature is that requires the passive tame. And usually you're going to press the activation button and your character is going to end up feeding the creature the food of its choice, right? More often than not, it's usually going to end up being berries and, uh, you know, herbivores or uh, what is it? Veg veggies, Vegiosaurus, right? Those guys are going to end up being the ones that you end up actually taming uh, by just a passive tame. Well, usually T-Rexes, Raptors, and stuff like that, that's going to end up being a knockout tame. So you actually get to see that example right here. But before we end up moving on, uh, I want to point out this little portal that's hidden behind here. I don't know if they ended up showing that off on purpose, but I'm kind of curious, is this portal going to actually take us to a different world? Because potentially that means that we could actually see an option for infinite worlds in that you would be able to enter these different instances and kind of warp back to your own personal world. Not exactly sure. We'll see as it ends up developing, but wait until it's hungry again is the important note that I wanted to mention here, because as you're taming creatures, for example, right here, there's going to be the taming bar, right? Uh, and this character ended up feeding this creature, this Fiomia, uh, one berry, and then it ended up going up to this far on the taming meter. So now you have to wait until it's hungry again before you can feed it again, and you gotta get the taming bar all the way to the maximum before you end up actually having the creature become something that is owned by you. So this is going to end up being the same creature, but they're scanning it, obviously, and you can see that it's a passive tame again. Doesn't really have that much stats. However, we have seen in screenshots and other footage that you will actually use the Fiomia creature on some crafting tables. So you're going to actually specifically grab this thing to place it into some specific crafting benches that is going to end up being helpful for you, right? 
So after you finally end up getting the taming bar all the way done, it's gonna be the same as Ark, where suddenly it just says, name your whatever the creature was that you just ended up taming. Now it's important to note as well, for those of you that haven't been keeping up with it, Pixar uh, is kind of supposed to be like Ark, but uh, you know, a micro version of it. So everything about the game is supposed to be playing faster, uh, you know, as well as the gameplay itself in regards to taming, you tame creatures faster, but you also lose the tame faster. So in three in-game days, you're supposed to already lose ownership of said creatures. Now, here is a very poor example because they've got some night gameplay footage, but they are actually trying to knock out the T-Rex here. That is going to be how you end up doing the... Um, knockout team right here so you can see they knocked out the pterodon right uh, and as you end up knocking them out you go into the creature's inventory while it's knocked out on the ground and then you're going to end up putting its favorite food into its inventory in most cases this is just going to be as simple as if it's a creature that ends up eating berries you put that into its inventory or if it's a meat eater you just put meat into its inventory and where that is going to end up coming into play with the quality of food is going to end up being basically how fast it's going to end up taming right so if you end up getting prime meat in arc that would actually end up taming creatures a lot faster than just normal raw meat that you would find out in the world same with mutton that you would get from sheep and stuff we'll see if that ends up having a part to play in pixar because with pixar being more simple it means that maybe we possibly are just going to see one universal meat being used across the board now you can also see in this inventory as well uh, the different berries and stuff and this purple berry I'm going to naturally assume is going to be a, uh, a, a narco berry because the way that this game is going to work is the torpidity is going to be the creature's knockout, right? So it's like as you end up uh, hitting a creature with a stun arrow, a sleeping arrow, or a sleeping potion and stuff like that is going to end up building up in its torp. That's what that's what everyone called it an arc, right? So as that ends up getting to the maximum, then as far as the game's concerned, it's like, oh, you're at the maximum amount of torpidity, you're going to knock out. So it's going to knock out the creature. This does work on players as well. But certain creatures will actually not tame fast enough uh, to actually counteract their torpidity going down. Meaning that, uh, uh, you know, you might put some meat in the creature's inventory and maybe it's waking up faster than it's actually being tamed. So that's where narco berries, sleeping potions, and stuff like that end up coming into play because you'll put it into its inventory and you'll force it to eat it so that the unconscious meter right here, which is the torpidity directly, is going to end up restocking. So it's gonna keep going back up. You gotta keep that creature unconscious while it's taming. And then once the taming bar ends up finally completing all the way at the end, you're gonna have that creature as your own. Now, uh, the other thing too is I'm really hoping that the way that the game works is there's gonna be options uh, that we're going to be able to change so that we hopefully aren't going to end up only having these creatures for like three end game days because that just kinda seems a little dis disappointing, right? But they do actually show off that very similar to Ark, we're going to end up having uh, the uh, action wheel, as it were, where you can change the name of the creature, you can uh, change the aggression, uh, aggression of the creature, its orders, whether it's going to follow you or stay put, whether it's going to attack creatures out in the wild or only attack back at creatures that are attacking it, and stuff like that, right? So obviously it's going to end up being something very similar to Ark, where you're going to end up building walls to protect yourselves, uh, as well as just protecting the creatures that you want to actually keep alive so that they don't end up dying, right? Not to mention you can choose the targeting range and stuff like that. And you gotta be careful about this stuff, folks, because if you end up having a creature being aggressive, it means that slowly over time it's gonna go out of its way to start fighting things, and it might just wander off and you might just lose track of it, right? Now, another thing too I wanna say in passing, because this happens all the time, I don't know why so many people are constantly commenting about this, saying, Pixar is a ripoff of Ark. It's being made by the same developer team, okay? So just to be clear about that, and last but not least, I just thought that this was interesting. Maybe this video wasn't supposed to be released yet because they actually say download today on Steam and Xbox One, and we know for a fact that this game is going to end up releasing more than likely March 27th because that's the release date that it says on Steam when you look at Pixar through your Steam wishlist. Anyways though, folks, that's long enough over analyzing a video of two minutes long. There wasn't really that much in this video outside of just how to tame creatures. Obviously when the game does end up releasing, I am going to have it on my channel and I'm going to play like a continuous let's play of it, but I'm also going to end up doing micro tutorials that most likely are going to be a little bit more uh, concise than one like this that's going to explain how taming works, how controlling the creatures work and all of that stuff, right? 
because I'm expecting that a lot of you watching at home are going to start playing the game alongside me. And, and with it, I think that it's going to be a good opportunity for me to start you know, making some good tutorials and stuff like that. Because with Ark, though I did play it on the channel, I never bothered making tutorials. And I found that a lot of people that were watching me play that game were generally very confused. So I don't want that to happen with Pixar. Anyways, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, favorite, and subscribe for more daily content. And if you want to support me, you can always sponsor my channel. Check links in the description for my merch store, as well as Gawkbox as a ways to donate to me for free. And be sure to hit that notification bell if you are interested in seeing the Pixar series when I actually started on the channel. Sign or and stay up again everybody.